Hi friends, welcome to Homemade and Homegrown. My name is Tammy Sousa. I'm in the tomato garden today. I can't wait to get these in the ground, so I thought I'd bring you with me. So we'll see you in a minute. So yes, here we are in the uh, garden where we're gonna put the tomatoes. So, and today, oh my word, it is a hot day. It's actually 25 degrees Celsius here today. And so um, they are definitely needing to get in the, in the ground. They are a bit heat st stressed, I guess. Um, I took them out of the greenhouse two, two days ago. I think, yeah, two days ago. And uh, brought them here where they're going to go so they can kind of get used to where they're going to be. And, uh, but I just thought it would be fun to bring you with me. I think tomatoes is probably the most popular plant or, or fruit uh, that uh, is planted every, every season, right? Everybody loves to grow tomatoes. And they're probably the easiest thing to grow as well. So I'm just gonna walk you through what I do. So what I'm gonna be doing actually is I'm gonna be mixing up a fish emulsion uh, with water, dilute it with water, and uh, because that's going to give it a nice strong root system, and that's what you want. You want your tomato plants or any plant for that matter to really kind of dig in deep and grow nice strong roots, so that way they they can really produce a good stock for you, especially when it comes to tomatoes, um, and then also it's going to be great for your your produce. So fish emulsion is a very natural type fertilizer. This is the one I'm using this year. Um, but this is great for indoor or outdoor plants. And But the best perk about it is that it's great for organic gardening. If you're into organic gardening like I am, fish emulsion is usually the way to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill up this bucket uh, not fill it. <laughs> I shouldn't say fill it. Uh, but this calls for a couple tablespoons. So I'm going to use this cap. One, two, and then fill it up with water. Here, I'll bring it down. Okay, I'm just going to take my little auger here and mix this up. Okay, what I've done is I've lined them all up where they're going to go. This was a couple days ago. Also, yesterday I got Joe to pick up a couple of these bags of um, garden soil. Uh, I don't know much about this one. All I know is that it's a product of Canada, yay Canada, and it's a three-in-one mix. It looks like it says weed-free, ideal for topping up garden and vegetable beds, planting trees and shrubs, and top dressing lawns. Uh, improved soil structure which we will need so this is why or the reason why I, I got to do I got him to do that is because I never tilled this area here at all I just laid the tarp down or the landscaping fabric down uh, to kill off any uh, grass and weeds and things like that which is this stuff um, and, and it was this full so it been sitting here for about a month maybe five weeks and then all we did was just uh, burnt holes through the landscaping fabric and then drilled the holes through um, but I wanted to make sure that they had some decent soil in it so I'm going to mix um, some of this bagged soil in with these holes and then I'm going to pour the, um, the fish emulsion in there kind of mix it up a bit before I put the plant in so here we go. Okay, bring it down here. Hopefully you can see what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm going to gently separate these guys because they're already stressed out as it is. So I'll take the soil out. Put it off to the side here. Oh my word, these black flies are crazy. They're eating me alive. I want to see how deep that is. Not deep enough. I want it deeper. Uh, if you can plant your tomatoes, see, uh, let me see if you can see this. You see these little bumps 
here on the on the uh, on the stem these are actually going to be coming roots so if you can actually when you separate your tomato plant and let me just take this one out for now oh yeah they needed to get out okay so we're gonna separate them okay and this first group of branches or leaves um, you want to and see these are suckers hold on pinch them off but if you can clean up the first couple branches and then plant it probably up to here so I got to dig deeper you're gonna really get an, a whole new set of roots but a real nice strong root system so let's keep digging Okay, and then I'm going to take a scoop of this bagged soil, kind of mix it in there, take another scoop, okay, and then we're going to do just probably like a third of a cup maybe or a quarter of a cup of this water with the fish emulsion and I'm going to mix that up too. Beautiful tomato plant in there. Oh yeah, that's nice and black soil. Okay, so I'm just going to put it off to the side so I can fit this guy in here. Now he's been twisting and bending and all that, but I'm gonna get them up there. Okay, and then I'm gonna take one of those clips. I'm doing this before it goes in, or before I fill it all in. So all I'm gonna do is it's just, they just clip together and, and, and they're removable, so I like that. Okay, so that'll hold them up there. And now I'm gonna fill the hole with the bag soil and the rest of the soil that was here already. And we'll give these guys a really good water after everything's planted. So that's it. Once I get all these planted, I'll bring you right back. Okay guys, not only did I feed the plants, the tomato plants, I fed the black flies with my blood. <laughs> I got eaten alive, holy cow. Anyway, so I've got them all done. All but four spots, so I could put four more plants in here. And uh, they're in the greenhouse, so I'm, uh, because I'm just, I've had about enough of these black flies. <laughs> I'm gonna do those last four tomorrow. But anyway, I'll uh, just kind of give you a quick little show of what what they look like. They are stressed a little. Whoops. They are stressed a little bit, um, but that's that's the way it goes when you uh, transplant. They go through transplant stress, and uh, not only that, because I had two two plants in one pot you have to separate them so you're kind of messing with the roots too so you're giving them some stress there as well so I really soaked them down with the water too on uh, on top of you know the feeding of the fish emulsion and I hope well I think they'll be fine they just got to adjust to their new environment and uh, yeah so we'll take a look here so they are a little wimpy right now, quite a few of them, but that's okay. They'll stand up. Some weren't as tall as the others, so as you can see, we got a shorty right there. And then we got a nice tall one right here, so quite a few of them were able to get tied to the trellis already, but um, not all of them. So I just kind of had little uh, sticks and I just positioned them to start growing straight up. 
Like I said, I can't take these black flies anymore. I should have known better. Do not plant on the hottest day <laughs> because they are out at that time. I'm dying of thirst too. <laughs> uh, so anyway, got the tomatoes in. Not all of them. There's still lots more inside the greenhouse that got to come out. Uh, those four and then I've got another spot um, up by the house that I'm going to put my Roma tomatoes in there because they're more of a bush tomato these are climbing so um, my romas are going to be up by the house beside the red chicken coop so okay well we'll see you tomorrow good morning everybody so i decided to uh make this day the first day for these all for all these guys to come out so we've got uh the egg layers and the meat kings all together. <laughs> and they're loving it. <laughs> hey guys. So the egg layers, they were getting a little cramped in their section. So I did open that up last night. So they've been kind of getting to know each other throughout the night. And, but they are loving this outdoors. <laughs> On the homestead, this is definitely a great sight to see. Um, especially with me right now, I'm loving the fact that I have this opportunity to raise my own chicken meat and uh, i don't know i've been investigating on other other things too other animals um contemplating goats and uh possibly even my own beef cattle We're, we'll see we'll <laughs> we'll see i was talking to joe actually about it a few days ago and saying you know i think all we really need for those two two uh animals uh cow and uh, some goats would be a pole barn right and then i just order the the hay from my neighbor you guys are all flighty stretching out the wings <laughs> and uh i thought you know the perfect spot would be just right right when you come down this hill and where we where we had set up our um processing we got a girl <laughs> in business <laughs> doing her business <laughs> We had the chicken processing area just kind of around that tree here. And I thought, you know what, that would be probably a perfect spot to put a pole barn. Because it's tucked away in the corner there. Yeah, I just think it would be a really good spot for one. But I would love to be able to just really create my own stability and my own, you know, processing my own meat. We've got 15 layers and we did lose two meat kings um due to suffocation actually they uh were two like they were laying on top of each other i don't understand why they're they're not smart enough to, <laughs> to get up <laughs> and walk walk away but it happens there's that would make us 28 so we had 30 meat kings now we've got 28 and we have 15 new layers and of course we've got our girls i'm gonna bring you back down to the tomatoes this is a perfect time actually because of the, the breeze and the cool weather of the morning i didn't feel like i gave you a good enough uh, explanation and tour of the tomatoes because i was getting eaten Woo! <laughs> falling down the hill again I was getting eaten alive. I had bites on top of bites on top of bites. <laughs> it was unbelievable. So I could, I just, I had to get out <laughs> and get back inside. So I'm going to just bring you down here and show you what I did yesterday. Plus it gives me an opportunity to take a look at how they did last night. You know, when you do transplant, they do go through a bit of a stress stressful time plus i had to separate the roots so let's see how well they did oh looks like half of my one side of my plastic came down have to fix that okay 
Let's see. I don't know, I think you're okay. But one thing I learned about a tomato farmer, oh, and I hate, this one's in stress. This one browned up and everything. But one thing I learned, I've been watching this Italian man. Oh, we got a, got a bud. On how he grows tomatoes. And uh, he suggests that when you transplant a tomato into the ground, uh, make sure that you've got no leaves touching the bottom. So cut the bottoms off and then just tie up to your trellis. Because if they are touching the ground, that can create disease. Some of them are just, they were too short. And some of them were, some of them, when they were in the, in the pot, were too crowded. So like this one here was bending. So I, I can't get that uh, to stand up quite yet. He will though. Oh, I've got one that fell over and came off. I gotta fix that. You girls, I'm telling you, you gotta follow me everywhere I go. No, don't do that. And you gotta wreck everything I do too. Ah, get. No. So yeah, I've got one, two, three, four, four spots still available. And those guys are in the greenhouse. I'll have to get to that plastic uh, later. Come on, girls. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Oh, I also planted three raspberry bushes. I kept them together and so that they could kind of be up against this fence. Um, I know you're supposed to separate them farther apart than this, but it'll be fine. So I've got a ton of Roma tomatoes that I have to get in the ground too. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to it today. But here we are. These are the Roma tomatoes. And I also have more Roma tomatoes in here. And I have more tomatoes here. So lots of tomatoes. <laughs> so I have to, uh, I'm going to keep some in here because I just want to I want to see how well they do. I'm not going to keep all of them in there because that would be way too much in one space. I ran out of um, pots. So I just threw them in here to give them a chance to, you know, strengthen up. Um, then I can transplant them from here to the ground. I also have a bunch of seeds that I've got to also start direct sowing. My, um, actually... I should go back in and show you. Beside the tomatoes, here's my spaghetti squash. They come up real nicely. Chickens are in here, and of course, they have to pack and pull at it. Okay, and then these are my pumpkins. And then over here is my cantaloupe. And this is my watermelon. And my peppers. My peppers are doing good. I got to get them into the ground as well. Uh, these are the hot peppers. I got to get those bell peppers down into the sun. Or, I mean, in the in the greenhouse. <laughs> I was going to say sun house. <laughs> Potatoes are in, in the far end over here. I got to think of, uh, well, I got to put the corn in. On, I'm going to line the back row with our corn. And I'm going to um, probably put those watermelon and cantaloupes in between. Joe's also, he, Joe also <laughs> has a sweet potato that needs to get in the ground too. We just got to wait for it to warm up a little bit more. Yesterday was our hottest day yet, which was 25 uh, degrees Celsius. Um, I was really <laughs> surprised to have that weather already. The girls, my fault. I didn't have the the gate shut, but they went to town on the compost, which isn't a bad thing. I just have to clean up their mess. <laughs> also, the strawberries that we planted. Now these guys are doing good too. I got these from Vessie Seeds Company and PEI. 
exciting. I'm gonna have to switch out the cage. We put this cage up, obviously, to protect them from the girls ripping them apart. But this is a tall dog cage. So I have to um, switch it out with the cage that I put for the chickens. There's two types of dog cage. One of them being that, the nice tall one, and the other one being a shorter one. Well, with how flighty they are, I'm noticing that they could fly up and over. <laughs> And I don't want that. Um, I know the older girls would be uh, probably pretty aggressive with them because they're the new kids on the block. <laughs> and they don't, uh, they have a pecking order. Chickens have a pecking order. Sometimes isn't so nice. I find that I, I treat them just like kids and, and I stop them. <laughs> Joe says, well, you just gotta let them be. They gotta do their thing. Let them be chickens. <laughs> Good morning, girls. How are you today? Let's open up the hatch. We switched out the light. They don't really necessarily need the heat lamp anymore, so just gave them a little soft lighting. I'm trying to get them used to coming up and down this ladder so they can go in and out. Come and go as you please. Look at your markings. Oh, they're getting so pretty. Yeah, you're getting so pretty. Look at you. Yeah. Okay. All right, you girls figure it out. <laughs> yeah, you were already down yesterday. Terry, go ahead. We named her Terry because, oh, 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 it's okay. Because uh, Joel, for some reason thinks her feet look like a pterodactyl so we're calling her terry <laughs> oh gosh trying to get uh based on their personality think up some more names for them the youngins are gonna do well they look like they're having fun all right so i'm off to the feed store I have to pick up some um, feed for the chicks. They're in the transition stage now, so instead of now eating starter, um, the meat kings are gonna be transitioned into the grower feed. And uh, I make sure that I pick an organic type feed. And then my layers, they're gonna be bumped up. Not a whole lot of protein in them. Uh, they don't need the extra protein yet because they're not laying eggs. Anyway, I have to pick up those and do some deliveries. I deliver eggs to some customers and I also uh, do deliveries for my other business that I have, which I'm a Mary Kay Beauty Consultant. So I um, have a few deliveries to do there. Today we're going to plant um, spaghetti squash. I put some zucchini in the ground already. I just want to check out for the next couple days to see how they did with the transplant because they have some yellow leafing right now before I decide whether to direct sow some more. But right now I'm going to start with my spaghetti squash, which is going to go right next here. I've got six going in for sure and then I've got uh, two more spots that I can put something else in and that might be for my extra zucchini plants not positive but we'll see also we're going to plant some of our hot peppers the um, broccoli cauliflower I've, well actually I got broccoli cauliflower is already in I've been really trying hard to keep the girls out of the garden because new growth they peck at it and they, they rip the leaves, um, which I think that's what they've done to my carrots. So I'm gonna probably have to direct sow my carrots again. Um, also, we're going to be planting the uh, different varieties of cucumbers. I've got some pickling and some slicers going in. And I also gotta get some of the Roma tomatoes that are in the containers up at the other garden beside the house. So lots of planting to do and uh, We'll just, we'll just take you along 
for the ride. <laughs> so these are the spaghetti squash. Now I've already drilled and loosened up this area, but I'm going to do it again. So these are the spaghetti squash plants. Running into some rocks. Okay, I'll get these done and we'll move on to the next one. So I'm drilling holes for some hot peppers to go in here. <laughs> There's a bit of a mix up with these peppers. I'm planting hot peppers that I'm not sure what they are because <laughs> I lost the, the tag. I don't know where the tag is. We're gonna find out when they grow. <laughs> Make sure that we get these really good ones, well-established ones in first. Because the roots are starting to come through, so we gotta get these out. Come on, there we go, oh yes. Okay, they're going to appreciate being transplanted. Just going to loosen them up a little bit just to encourage them that they can start stretching out their roots here. Okay, we'll get these guys in and move on to the next, next one. Okay, we got the peppers put in. I had a couple left, or three left actually. So I just threw them in these pots. Hot peppers usually, the plants don't usually get all that tall. Um, they're kind of bushy more than anything. So I'm sure they'll be fine here. Next up is the pole beans. These ones are Kentucky Wonder. And uh, we'll get them in the ground here. I'm thinking I'm going to plant both sides. So I bought these last year, so I'm really hoping that they're going to be fine. Oh, we got one that may have survived. It looks like he's trying to make more growth here. I didn't pull the, the other ones out just in case. Yeah, there's a couple more that are trying to come back. Okay, we'll go over to the other side. Yeah, I'd like to get all these planted. Just because they're old, they're old, like last year's seeds, so I'm not quite sure how well they'll do. I'm kind of double batching here. Double planting, I mean. I think I'll put some over on the other trellis too. Well, it's starting to look a lot greener in the garden. <laughs> so I've got all the peppers planted, except for my bells. My bells are still up at the house. They're really taking uh, quite a while to uh, to get some decent growth on them before I bring them down. But I think I'm I'm just gonna say the heck with it. Bring them down to the greenhouse, and hopefully that'll be uh, that'll give them some more juice. <laughs> so now we're gonna move on to the bush beans. Uh, these are Blue Lake bush beans. Another older bean that I got this was the date says October 2016 
so quite a few quite a few years old but these are in these mylar bar uh, mylar bars <laughs> mylar bags they usually stay a lot fresher when they're in something like this so what I was going to do I was gonna try and because they don't really need like a big trellis or anything but they do like to have a little bit of support so what I was trying to do I'll turn the camera around uh, this is where I had them last year in this box and I had these uh, bamboo sticks and I just grabbed them from the dollar store actually and then I had some I had some string just to give them something to hang on to but for some reason and I had more string in the shed but I can't find it so I'm gonna have to get rooting around Joe's shed but anyway this is where I'm gonna put them I do have a few here that are that are already matured but there's still gonna be some direct sowing as well with those seeds so let's get to work Now I had already tilled this and broke it up a long time ago, so this is really nice to see that it's nice and loose. But I know I gotta get these guys in the ground for sure. No. Jeez, that all fell apart. Just gonna mix it. Fishing worm there. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get these planted and move on to the next one. Okay, the bush beans are in and the pole beans are in, so now we're going to move on to some cucumbers, different variety of cucumbers. The long English one, and I'm gonna have that one climb up the trellis here. And then we're gonna have my regular sliced cucumbers. Um, they're gonna be going along here and then I have another cucumber which is for the pickling cucumber I'm going to try making my own dill pickles uh, this year so um, that's got to go on this side of the of the trellis let's get to work <laughs> so I have to be really delicate with these because they're trying to actually <laughs> make more root and they've been in this starter cell way too long. One thing about doing YouTube channels, you know, people used to think I was crazy because I was talking to myself. Now I get to talk to you. Okay, we've got two extras, so I'm gonna kinda just shimmy them in somewhere. Get them into the ground, move on to the next. Okay, guys. <laughs> it's been quite a day. Okay, so I got all the cucumbers put in. The different varieties so let's uh, take a walk over oh yeah let's take a walk over first and then I'm gonna bring you up because I after I finished the cucumbers I went up and planted the uh, the Roma tomatoes up by the barn or ch uh, chicken coop and uh, and then I filled up the last four spots here with Romas. So we've got San Marzano, the majority of them, San Marzano's over, the, over there with four Romas. They were strong plants and I didn't want to, uh, didn't want to waste them. Okay, so let's go over what we've done. Okay, so we planted a fair amount of hot peppers, still in a pickle, pardon the pun. <laughs> um, with the variety. So I know I've got banana peppers, jalapenos, cayenne tree, and what's the fourth one? I think that's it. Anyway, um, started. So we're gonna find out what this tray was. <laughs> 
We're going to find out what this tray was. <laughs> I'm thinking it's it was the Cayennes because I've been trying to see the difference in their lead. And there is a slight difference. Um, then I got my spaghetti squash in. I've got two spots here that I have to figure out what I'm going to... Uh, put there. I may put a, a couple more zucchinis. I'm not sure. Okay, then we've got the two different variety of pickle or cucumbers. This side from from that blue marker over is pickles, which are the uh, burpee pickle. It's called. Over here is the slicer, and these are um, market more. I think they're called. Then I direct seeded more whole beans on this side as well as on this side uh, those are marigolds I gotta get them in I haven't planted them yet these are my long English cucumbers they'll climb up the trellis so I've got a few of those planted okay then I went over to this box planted the rest of the hot peppers which I believe these ones might be the banana peppers I'm hoping <laughs> that these were the ones uh, because we'd like to pickle those so we've got them and what else oh yeah the uh, bush beans bush beans I've got some of them started and put them in and then the rest of the rows I direct seeded I'm gonna put more support trellis uh, for these guys um, they don't need much but just a little bit so I need to uh, finish off the the support here look at my strawberries they're gonna be awesome this year oh also when Joe and I planted the other the strawberries that we got in the mail from Bessie seeds check these guys out they're doing amazing I'm really pleased. I'll bring you up to where the tomatoes are. Excuse that mess. This is going in the fire. <laughs> Man, I got a lot more tomato plants than I thought. I thought I had 66. I've got a heck of a lot more than that. Let's get you where these uh, Roma tomatoes are. Okay, let's put this coffee down. There they are. So I do got another box. The other tomatoes that are in the greenhouse up here and figure out another spot for my bell peppers so roman tomatoes how many do i got in here 22. and if i look a little greasy my oldest had me get under the truck with him and help him with his manifold and try to get that off that's a job and a half <laughs> so i stopped doing what i was doing to help him out let's do a little look-see of the flower garden that I did the, uh, a couple weeks ago. So everything's come up quite nicely. So again, I still haven't found out what this flower is. Some type of a li lily, I believe. With some coral bells there. Some hostas. I'm not quite sure of the variety. Now here is my beautiful peonies. I believe that's how you say it. <laughs> But look at how lush and big. She's got a tomato plant in the middle to hold some of those some of those stems up because once these flowers get blooming, they weigh her down. So this I this is the first time I'm seeing this. So this is the start of the flower of that other one over there. Okay, so I don't know. If you know what it is, comment below. Forgot over here. Uh, I planted a bleeding heart, and she's coming up right there. I was wondering. More uh, coral bells. This is the rosebud. Oh, I got my first bud right there. Look at that. Hello. You going to show me your beauty in a, in a little while? Look at that. That's going to be a yellow rose with pink tips. There's another peonies. She's gonna have some beautiful big flowers. 
And these ones are uh, pink on the outside and white in the middle. Some more hostas. More coral bells. This is the piece of that tree that went down, that we put down. It kind of reminded me of a heart. <laughs> anyway, I kept it there. And then this is a rose bush that we're hoping we save. Okay, and then we'll come over here. Excuse that noise in the back, guys. Still working on the truck. <laughs> Okay, so we've got on either side of the arbor here, um, clematises. So they're doing good, starting to latch on, which is awesome. Ooh. Ooh. So it has been a good day. It's been a productive day. Got lots planted, still more to plant. Glad you were able to join me. All oh, these black flies are brutal this year. Unbelievable. I don't know where you're at, but and if you if you get plastered with these black flies and mosquitoes and deer flies, all that stuff. Anyway, I appreciate you coming by and taking the time to watch my videos. I really enjoy doing them with you and for you. Uh, we'll see you 